Ozempic has been helping people with type 2 diabetes for years manage their blood glucose levels. Uh, there is a known side effect which makes this drug very popular. There is rapid weight loss and some women are now reporting fertility changes. According to Ozempic, uh, Ozempic's drug maker Eli Lilly, three patients have come forward after getting pregnant while on the medication. This morning we are turning to our chief medical officer. Are you our officer? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, think not, so. I'm, Correspondent I'm, not, I'm not the officer. About Maybe the they should Ozempic, let me know about these. Ozempic baby phenomenon. And, and it, it has got, this drug has gotten wildly popular for weight loss. It, too. it has, all right. And so I just don't want to like kind of throw like something crazy out there for everybody that's been happy about taking Ozempic. But because it's a good thing. But there is this Ozempic baby phenomenon. So let me explain to you physically what's happening here. So what your body is doing is that you are losing weight. So if you have have polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, then you usually don't have a normal period. You don't have normal ovulation. So if you lose a bunch of weight, then you're going to have more ovulation. If you have more ovulation, you're going to have more chance to have a baby. That's the first thing. The second thing is that in the belly, Ozempic changes the way that you absorb medication. So that means if you're taking oral contraceptives, that means that they're not going to be as effective. So that's two ways that you're going to increase your ability to have a baby. Um, there are some other, you know, social things that people think that's why, you know, people are out there doing more and, and because they feel happy and healthy and have more uh, energy. Um, that's one thing that, that people think, but that's not actually scientifically based. The it first is, two is, are scientifically based and people are having increased uh, fertility. Okay, then three women have come forward. Is, is that the extent of what we know? No, no, well, three women have come forward, but the issue is that this could be lots of people because people are, are realizing that they, you know, you're supposed to, let me, let me say this real quick, that you're supposed to really not be trying to get pregnant uh, while you're on this medicine. You should stop the medicine two months before you are trying to get pregnant. But people aren't doing that because they're trying to lose weight and they don't want to stop losing weight trying to have a baby. So I'm, this is not something, I don't want people to go out there and say, well, I'm going to go get on a Zipic and then start having a baby if I couldn't have a baby for uh, two years. That's not what we want you to do. Well, we want you to recognize that if you are on Ozempic and you are not trying to get pregnant, you need to kind of watch yourself because this could pop up on you if you're not uh, ready for that. All right, next on your plate. Next on the plate. All right, so there are a couple of things out there. I talked about menopause last week, about the foods you should eat, and I couldn't even get through the grocery store without people stopping me saying, thank you so much for talking about this. I need, people need to know this because it's something that people don't talk about. I want to tell you, I did mention that there was a medication, a, a prescribed medication for the vasomotor symptoms, meaning the hot flashes and all that stuff, and this medicine is called Vioza. Okay, it is a non-hormonal medicine for menopause. And so please, if you have menopause and you're having all these night sweats and stuff, please, Viosa, talk to your doctor about that. Now, from the whole concept of this is good, this is bad, there's a little thing out there that's talking about if you eat peanut butter, if you're a man, it can decrease by nine uh, prostatic hyperplasia and increase your ability to pee at night if you have a swollen prostate. That is true, but from that, the tales of you just don't know what to say when it comes to science, if you incre increase your peanut butter intake, you can also increase your risk of non-advanced prostate cancer. Wait, 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 wait. So that's why I want people to do, you can't just listen to everything people say on the internet, man, because if you eat too much peanut butter, you can increase your risk, theoretically, of prostate cancer. How much, but it, how much peanut butter would you have to you're eat? You're talking about gallons of peanut butter. No, I'm, I'm really not talking about gallons. No, I'm just saying it, 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 the, the ingredients of peanut butter can actually help you with voiding in, in, uh, in urination at night if you have a, a swollen prostate well, but just don't eat too much of anything man too much of anything is bad just like too much, much ozempic all right is bad if see, you see are, we, we learned a lot in this segment and you i'm can, not even finished <laughs> you know, you are <laughs> you can find this health segment on our website wwl i thought i was a chief medical officer i thought, I thought okay. watch out for the peanut butter